Borderlands 3 is here! And like with any game that's a new entry in a long-running series, there's always gonna be newcomers and beginners. So, we've got you guys covered with some tips here. A couple of things Borderlands 3 doesn't explain, just stuff to help you out. So let's get started off with number 10. Borderlands 3 has a ton of different weapons. That's kinda like its thing, obviously, I'm sure you all know, but there are so many different types of weapons here, so there really isn't any need to be doubling up on weapon types, like in your loadout, specifically because ammo drains pretty fast early on in the game as it is, and say like using two of the same weapons or even four of the same weapon is going to run you dry very quick because they're all pulling from the same ammo pool. It's not worth it. Try to diversify your arsenal. That way, like say when you run out of handgun ammo, you can jump to your SMG. And then when you run out of that, you can jump to your shotgun. If you just use four different types of SMGs, you're just gonna screw yourself over. The same advice is for elemental weapons as well. Like if you're gonna be using elemental weapons, at least try to use different ones. So not only do you have to not worry about ammo drain, but you're also gonna be able to switch quickly between elementals weapons, depending on, you know, what enemy it is you're fighting. Weapon diversity is key and it's gonna make Borderlands 3 that much easier for you. Trust us. But next at number 9 we're gonna kick off another one with an obvious first sentence. Side quests and side activities are really important in this game, obviously, uh, but you want to get stronger and get cooler stuff constantly. That's the name of the game. So one avenue we'd like to point out are crew challenges. These are incredibly useful and should not be missed. Now, they might seem like smaller challenges, but completing them is really useful. Now one of the highlights we want to point out is the Typhon Crew Challenge. In every game area there are three Typhon logs to find and they're scattered about, usually more towards the corners, towards the edges of the maps. If you find three, you'll unlock a secret Typhon cache, and these are typically filled with higher tier orange and purple gear and weapons that you're gonna definitely want. You know, if you think about it, they're relatively easy to complete just because it's about searching smart. It's not really about fighting your way through a difficult boss or anything like that. So it's just a good task to consider taking on early on in the game. Now next at number 8, a smaller control option oriented type of thing. Anyone here play Apex Legends? Remember how cool the pinging system was in that game? How useful it is? Well, Borderlands 3 does something pretty similar with their pinging system now, finally. First off, it's context sensitive, like Apex. So all you gotta do is point at something and hit the X key or up on a D-pad and the game does the rest and calls out what it is. It's really especially useful if you're playing with randoms uh, or something with no mic, you know, you wanna mark a gun, an enemy or something like that. Just let your squad know whatever it is very easily with the press of a button. It's super useful when playing with friends too if you just want to point out something real quick. Yeah, it's just a neat little quality of life improvement feature that you shouldn't forget about because it's easy to do so. Now next at number seven, speaking of things easy to forget about, here's one that's very easy to miss. Throughout Borderlands 3, you'll occasionally get a notification that you have mail, and if you're like us at first, you either ignored it or just didn't even know where to access your mail. If you go to the social tab in your menu, you can access the mail section. Now in the mail section, you can find messages sent to you from you know random NPCs in the game that you've interacted with or helped, and in the messages actually come rewards. Yes, that's why we're talking about this. The primary example of this is like, you can get a message with a gun directly from the manufacturer if you go around killing enough enemies with their brands of guns, which is a very cool thing to do. It's worth noting that your mailbox is account-wide and not character-specific, so you can accept them from whatever character you want, but just know that the reward in question will be tied to the level your character was from when they received the mail. So, now you know. But next at number six, this next one is something that a lot of us forget to do in most games that have this option, especially this, and that's the ability to respec your Vault Hunter. This is honestly where Borderlands shines with this stuff. Each Vault Hunter has a few different builds that you can go for and build up with, and not everyone is going to work for every single player. Everybody's tastes and play styles are different, so if you're going for a certain build and you're just not feeling it, if you don't have to start the whole game over when you can just stop at the quick change machine, uh, you know, the thing where you can do all your cosmetic skins and stuff, and from there you can essentially respec your character and it doesn't cost that much to respec so in theory you can actually do it a few times here and there it's actually way more painless than you'd expect for most games especially considering if you're well versed in say some traditional rpgs where it's a big freaking deal with games like this you really want to dial into a certain build and if build guides aren't your thing and you like to experiment this works out great for you. Gearbox also released all the skill trees online. If you want an out of game visual to kind of help plan your build, maybe on you know a laptop or something, you can do that. 
Now over at number five, we have shift keys and a bit of an explainer. You know, for those of you who maybe haven't played Borderlands 2 or just never mess around with the whole key thing, shift keys are 25 digit codes that you can redeem either in game or online via your gearbox account. Redeeming these codes get you certain benefits in games, specifically cosmetic rewards or golden keys that can be used to open the golden loot box on your ship, Sanctuary. Now just a few more things about these things that you may not know. In order to redeem them online, you'll have to link your Gearbox account with your, say, Epic or PSN or Xbox Live account, uh, whatever you got, and then you're good to go. You should also know that they aren't good forever and do in fact expire. So if you see someone tweeted out by someone or you find one on a website somewhere and you're able to, you should redeem it sooner rather than later if you want some of that sweet free loot. Now, lastly, if you haven't seen any floating around out there, there are a ton of people just come compiling lists on Twitter and Reddit and various websites. So if you haven't gotten in on it yet, I mean, what are you waiting for? Go for it. It's free stuff and it's fun to hunt down. But over at number four, you know, if you've at least seen a Borderlands, you know that those purple rock deposits scattered throughout the world are Iridium, a secondary currency. And if you didn't, well, now you know, that's what this video is for. You see them all around from the very start of the game, but you aren't able to mine and harvest them until you complete the 10th story mission, that's uh, beneath the meridian. Once you've completed that mission and gained the ability, you can harvest the stuff by simply striking the deposits with your melee attacks. Now, from there, you can start hoarding stuff so you can purchase some cool new stuff. Cheap among them uh, is shopping Crazy Earl's wares. So if you go directly to Crazy Earl, you can buy all sorts of cosmetics to differentiate your character from everyone else. Skins, character heads, stuff like that. I will say some of the heads for the characters are really badass. But then you can also spend the stuff at Crazy Earl's vending machine where you can buy some weird and truly unique weapons that you'll either love or hate, but... They're worth checking out at least, right? The name of the game here is Cool and Dumb Guns, so go for it. There's one more thing that you can use it for late in the game, but we're not going to get into it out of concerns for, you know, spoilers and stuff, but you'll know, you'll find out. But over at number three, early on in Borderlands 3, you're tasked with, you know, getting your first vehicle for the catch or ride system. In this quest, Ellie has you go out, find an outrider, the basic vehicle type, and hijack it, and then park it on the little platform thing for catch a ride. The various parts and upgrades for your vehicles work the same way. Now, while playing through the game and traversing through the various worlds, you'll either just encounter cool upgraded vehicles on the battlefield, or in some instances, just parked in weird challenging places, but they have some wild parts. So find these vehicles, kill whoever has it or is defending it, and then take them to the nearest catcher ride system to essentially park it and add new parts to your repertoire. For example, like you can get some really metal looking treads for your cyclone that can really do some damage or like, you know, laser wings for the outrunner that don't let you fly, but kind of let you cause damage when you boost through people. So yeah, maybe be on the lookout for cool new vehicles when you're out in the world. You know, don't be afraid to just steal it if you see it has a cool gun on it and bring it back home because it can help you out. That's essentially how you fill out your car customization menu. That's not immediately apparent, but now you know. Also definitely consider doing Ellie's crew challenges in particular because they can definitely give you some good stuff as well. Now at number two, obviously Borderlands 3 basically feeds you guns. The other games were like that, but each game kind of ramped it up and Borderlands 3 is crazy. So here's a hot beginner tip for some of you out there. In the early hours especially, don't really sweat or bother with buying any guns at the vendors. There's not much reason since the game gives you so many other ways to acquire much better stuff. So really save that cash, spend it on the important stuff. Once you're in Sanctuary, you're gonna wanna spend a bunch of money with Marcus's shop for storage deck upgrades. You know, the ability to hold more ammo, maybe more stuff in your backpack. That stuff is way more important and you'll thank us later. Now, you'll have so many guns that the early stuff that vendors offer up doesn't matter too much. There is some exciting stuff, but still like really your money can generally be used in other places for much better gain it's a tricky balance though because you don't want to sit on too much cash with the potential of losing some of it if you die you know but again it's up to you we're not going to tell you how to spend your hard-earned cash but it's something to strongly consider here when you're starting out in the game now finally at number one look you know this isn't our first rodeo we know how it is it can be super easy to just get wrapped up in all the available side quests at any given time because like you know you don't want to like level one way and then have the quests and rewards be completely out of sync with your level and just not worth it anymore we've been there in many games you don't have to worry about that really in borderlands 3 though kind of this time around they've actually taken steps to make all that stuff worth doing if you miss out on your first run through an area after completing the final mission of the story campaign all of those unfinished side quests from your first 
few hours on Pandora and stuff like that, the earlier areas in the game, will instantly scale up to match your new, improved end game abilities, and you can just tackle them then, rather than just, you know, one-shotting everything that moves and getting a level 4 pistol as a reward. You know, sure, it may seem small, but when you're trying to grind out every bit of experience and every piece of cool new loot you possibly can, it definitely helps. And you may want to do this and catch up on stuff before you really dive deep into the end game stuff, which honestly, we can save for another video. But those are 10 things we think you need to know about Borderlands 3 if you're jumping in for the first time. Some beginner tips, some things the game does not tell you, etc. But if you're playing, there are probably a lot of new people jumping down in the comments who are new. So leave some more tips for the community. That would be helpful. But if you learn something, clicking the like button will help us out a ton. We really appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.